Hey, welcome to my video on how to fly instrument approaches in the Cessna G1000. In this video, we're going to talk about the GFC 700 Autopilot and Flight Director, which are the integrated autopilot for the Cessna G1000s. We'll talk about types of vertical guidance that are available on the G1000 and also how to make the Autopilot and Flight Director couple to those types of vertical guidance. We'll talk about how to fly approaches then and how to fly missed approaches in the G1000. So why did I make a video about this? G1000 avionics are very capable. I prefer to teach instrument students in them. I prefer to fly uh, in instrument conditions in them, but they're also potentially very confusing. Even if you're used to flying the G1000, some of the instrument capabilities are a little bit nuanced. In particular, vertical guidance is a thing that many students struggle with, uh, and it can be a little bit confusing. So I thought I would emphasize that a bit here. And in general, there are not that many G1000 specific instrument videos and tutorials and lessons available. There are a lot of lessons on how to fly different types of approaches, but not many of them use the G1000 specifically. And lastly, you know, airlines have standard operating procedure. They're very detailed processes for how to use the avionics and the automation in the airplane on different types of approaches. And I thought, why not try to create something a little bit like that? give people more guidance on how to make the most of the avionics and automation in the airplane. So in order to start uh, understanding how the G1000 can be used to fly instrument approaches, first we need to talk about the autopilot and the flight director. And this is specific to the GFC 700. The KAP140 can do some of these things, but not all of them and not as integrated. So I'm going to focus on the GFC 700. Cessna collectively calls this the Automated Flight Control System, the AFCS, the flight director and the autopilot together. There is a mode enunciator at the top of the PFD, and it shows either modes that are armed in white, like here you can see GPS or nav mode is armed, and alt select is armed, those are in white, or captured or active, and those are the ones in green. Roll mode, the autopilot is on, it's in green, vertical speed mode is in green. So then there are really two parts to the autopilot. There's the flight director, which tells the airplane what to do or tells the pilot what to do. And when the flight director is active, these magenta lines tell the pilot where to steer and the yellow lines tell you where you are currently steering. So the goal is to put the yellow bars inside the magenta bars. And you could think of this as the brain of the system. And the autopilot is actually the muscle. So when you engage the autopilot, it will do what the flight director is commanding it to do. And if the autopilot is not on, you, the pilot, can manipulate the airplane into, into what the flight director is telling you to do. So first, let's talk about the lateral modes. This is the, the autopilot control panel that's on the left side of both the MFD and the PFD. So the lateral modes, uh, first, just engaging the flight director will engage roll mode. And roll mode is the default lateral mode. All it does is essentially maintain the current bank angle. There's some nuance to what it does, but if you engage it in a turn, in general, it will keep you in a turn. If you engage it straight and level, it will keep you wings level. While it's the default mode, rarely is it the mode you actually want. <clears throat> Usually you want something like heading mode, which follows the heading bug. And to engage that, you press the heading button. Nav mode will engage either GPS or VOR, or it can also engage localizer, depending on what's active on the CDI. It will, it will follow whatever is active on the CDI and enunciate accordingly. Usually you want nav or heading mode. I should point out here that if you press heading or nav and engage these modes, and then press heading or nav again, you will disengage these modes and engage roll mode. So you have to be a little bit careful. All of the buttons are like toggles. And if you press them multiple times, you'll end up switching on and off the mode that you think you're, you're engaging. So those are the lateral modes. Vertical modes, again, if you press flight director, it will default to the default vertical mode, which is pitch mode. It maintains the current pitch, again, with some nuance, but essentially, if you engage it when you're pitched up, it will maintain that pitch. Also, like roll mode, it's seldom the mode that you actually want. It's just the default that comes on. Usually, you want another mode the simplest of which is alt mode, which just holds your present altitude. It ignores the altitude preselect. It holds your current altitude and it enunciates what altitude it's holding. Vertical speed mode is a way to get to or from another altitude. 
when you engage it, it will capture your current vertical speed. And then you can set vertical speed with the nose up and nose down buttons and it enunciates what vertical speed it is trying to maintain. Flight level change is the last vertical mode and it just holds airspeed. In fact, some similar autopilots just call this indicated airspeed mode. Flight level change will climb or descend at a preselected airspeed and it will capture your current airspeed when you engage it or you can nose up, nose down to change the speed that it is trying to maintain. There are a couple of special modes. One of them is VNAV and we'll talk about this in a little bit with the uh, approaches, but VNAV follows VNAV guidance and it will follow that guidance to the preselected altitude so it will it will stop you at the higher of the preselected altitude or the VNAV altitude and this will become clear more in a minute if it's not when it's active VPATH is, is uh, shown in green when it's armed it shows in white approach mode is another sort of special mode and what it does is it couples lateral and vertical mode for glide slope and glide path guidance. So it will follow on an approach, a glide slope or glide path. It will absolutely ignore altitude preselect and we'll keep coming back to that. Lastly, uh, there's this go around mode that some aircraft have a go around button. It's located just above the, the throttle. And when you press it, it engages go around mode, which just commands a straight ahead climb. It ignores what's on the CDI, it ignores what's in the flight plan, it just commands a straight ahead climb, which is great for about the first 10 seconds of a go around or a missed approach. That's uh, another special mode. Okay, so things to watch out for with the GFC 700 autopilot. As I mentioned before, the lateral and vertical modes are all toggles. If you press heading, you engage heading mode. If you press heading again, you engage roll mode. Uh, switching the CDI will disrupt the lateral mode and revert to roll mode. If you are in GPS and you switch the CDI from GPS to VOR, the mode enunciation will flash and revert to roll. Vertical modes do not offer envelope protection. So if you engage vertical speed mode in a climb and you tell it to climb at 1,000 feet per minute, which a Cessna 172 might be able to do at sea level, it cannot do that at 7,000 feet. It will absolutely fly you until you're very close to a stall. Uh, similarly, flight level change, if you set it to uh, 115 knots, it, depending on where you have the power set, could descend you at a very uncomfortable rate. It does not have any protection for descent rate. It's just trying to maintain airspeed using the elevator. Uh, and you're controlling the power. So if you have full power, or idle power, it will adjust the elevator accordingly. So to make sure that we don't get surprised by these things, first, um, it's a best practice to engage the lateral and vertical modes you want, confirm that the flight director command bars are commanding something that makes sense, check the mode enunciations, then engage the autopilot. So turn on the brain, make sure the brain is saying something that makes sense, then engage the muscle. Because if you turn on the flight director and it's doing something unexpected, you probably have engaged the wrong modes. Secondly, as I mentioned, anytime you make a change to the autopilot or flight director mode, anytime you change the CDI, anytime you change your GPS flight plan, confirm that the mode enunciations and guidance are what you expect. You're still in the lateral and vertical mode that you want, and the autopilot is still on. It's also easy to accidentally disengage the autopilot and not realize it and not be flying the airplane. And lastly, it's best practice to climb in flight level change and descend in vertical speed. So that wraps up the autopilot. Let's talk about vertical guidance for another minute. So there are a couple of different types of vertical guidance. The first is VNAV. And VNAV can be used in any phase of flight uh, except for final approach. So you can use it en route if you just want to descend below Bravo airspace, for example, by a certain waypoint. Uh, it can only be used for descent, though. It cannot be used for climb. Uh, so essentially, it's used for descent planning, and you can edit the constraints for altitudes at different waypoints. It uses a magenta caret, uh, which I'll show you here in a minute. Glide slope guidance is approach guidance that's used in general for ILS approaches. There's some very nuanced exceptions, but 
the times that you'll see this really are eyeless approaches. It's green symbology, which is the way uh, Garmin and Cessna depict radio nav aid guidance. There's glide path guidance, which is completely analogous to glide slope guidance, but it's powered by the GPS. So it's used for LPV, LNAV, VNAV, and uh, any type of approach guidance. So it's only used on approaches. It's only used by WASH GPSs, and it uses a magenta diamond. Um, so it's magenta, again, indicating that it's powered by the GPS. Lastly, there is this advisory glide path that WASH GPSs create on LNAV and in some cases LP approaches uh, when there's a published vertical descent angle. So when the chart has an angle of descent on it, even though the approach does not have LPV or LNAV VNAV minima, the G1000 will create an advisory glide path and it uses this plus V nomenclature. I'll show that in a minute. But again, it's a magenta diamond. It looks exactly like the glide path uh, but instead of enunciating LPV, the G1000 enunciates LNAV plus V. So digging into VNAV a little bit more. Again, it's vertical guidance computed by the GPS. It uses this magenta caret symbology. So there, just left of the altimeter, you see what we call the vertical deviation indicator, and it has a V at the top and this magenta caret. So that's the way that Garmin depicts the, the vertical deviation that it calls VNAV. And it will appear there regardless of how the autopilot or flight director are set up. It appears there when you're within one minute of the top of descent in any phase of flight other than the final approach phase when you're on a GPS course and you have altitude constraints in the uh, flight plan. So here's how you enter the altitude constraints in the flight plan. It's that far column there. If you turn the cursor on and scroll through the flight plan, it will alternate between the fix and the altitude. So you can reprogram the, uh, the altitude at various fixes. You can also change the descent angle, which you see in that bottom window called current VNAV profile. You can turn the cursor on and scroll down to that window or press the soft key to change the cursor down to that window and change that descent angle. It defaults to two and a half degrees down, but it's, it's editable. <clears throat> the colors of the altitude constraints do mean something. So when you, in particular, when you load a procedure from the database, it will load with, with uh, altitude constraints already in it. And it might have at or above, at or at or below constraints as depicted there on the left. But the color and the size of the text also means something. So large white text is just... FYI, it's informational. This is the altitude you will be at when you cross this fix. Small white text is when you have retrieved altitude from the database, but it's still informational. It's not constraining the way that the vertical deviation appears. Whereas the blue text, those are constraints. Those, the, the GPS will compute when to start your descent at the angle specified to reach that altitude, and it will give you the vertical deviation to that altitude. And again, the large text is if you enter a constraint, the small text is if it's retrieved from the database. So in this example, at uh, uh, the top example at Fisher, this is saying you'll be at 10,000 feet. At Habak, you'll be at 9,300 feet. But what it's actually guiding you to is 8,100 feet at Falur. And the being at 9,300 at Havoc is just a result of starting your descent prior to Havoc in order to reach 8,100 feet at Fowler. Then, and that was retrieved from the database because it's in small text. Then at CGIX, the final approach fix, you should be at 8,100, but you can see again that's in white. And the G1000 will not give you guidance past the final approach fix. So that appears in white, as does the missed approach guidance later on. So you can learn to interpret what those different colors and sizes mean for VNAV. Okay, so how do we get the autopilot or flight director to follow VNAV guidance? First, we have to press this button. So this is the autopilot. We're going to press the VNAV button on the autopilot controller. It does not change whether that vertical deviation indicator appears or disappears, but it controls what the autopilot and flight director do with it. So when you press that button within five minutes to the top of descent, 
if there's a valid VNAV waypoint in there, you're using the GPS, VPATH will appear in white, meaning it's armed. So in order for it to start descending, you have to set the altitude preselect to a lower altitude, and the top of descent has to be in front of you, meaning the path is above you. So you can continue forward, that vertical path will come down, and the autopilot will then join that path. It will then level you off at the higher of the VNAV target altitude or the altitude select altitude. So it will respect the altitude preselect. In this example, it will level you off at 3,000. So say you're at 5,000 here, you're descending to a 2,500 foot VNAV waypoint, but maybe ATC has told you to maintain 3,000. This will level you off at 3,000. And you know that because you will see Alt-V armed. So that tells you the autopilot is going to respect what's in the altitude preselect window and level you out at the higher of the vertical, uh, the VNAV target altitude or the altitude preselect altitude. So you must manually capture the path. So what this means is, as I said, if the top of descent is in front of you, the autopilot will fly and the path will come down and it will join it. But if you activate it too late and the top of descent is behind you, the path is below you, the autopilot will not dive you down to catch it. You have to engage vertical speed mode, nose down, to make sure that you will eventually make that path come up to you before the autopilot will capture it. So then there's glide slope. So the glide slope is approach guidance. It's provided by a ground-based nav aid. So the vertical deviation indicator appears in the same place, but this time it has a green G and a green diamond. And conceptually, it works the same. In this case, the glide slope is below you in this depiction. And that information will appear regardless of how the autopilot or flight director are set up. In order to see this guidance, you must have the localizer tuned and displayed on the CDI, and you must be within 90 degrees of the course. If you're flying away from the field, you won't see it. But as you turn inbound towards the field, you'll see the glide slope. Then to get the autopilot or flight director to follow, this is where we use that special vertical mode, approach mode. And what approach mode will do is it will arm a nav mode, but it will also arm a glide slope mode. So for example, if you're on a ILS and you press the approach button, you'll see the localizer mode armed there on the left, that's the lateral mode, and you'll see the glide slope mode armed on the right, that's the vertical mode. Once you intercept the localizer and the glide slope, they will capture and turn green. So this is what you would see. In this case, the flight director is coupled to the localizer and the glide slope, but the autopilot is not on. So if you were hand flying, you can still use the glide slope and uh, localizer guidance through the flight director. Notice there's no Alt-V or Alt-S or any other altitude mode armed. So when glide slope is active, it will not respect what's in the altitude preselect window. Glide path mode is very similar to glide slope. It's just approach guidance provided by a WASH GPS. It appears on the vertical deviation indicator with a magenta G and a magenta diamond. Again, symbology indicating it's powered by the GPS. You must be approaching the final approach fix on an approach with LPV or LNAV VNAV minimums. And you will, at the same time, the vertical deviation indicator appears with the Magenta G, you will also see the approach mode enunciation, which will usually be LPV. Occasionally it will be L slash VNAV. So it's, it's indicating that the GPS has done its integrity check, has sufficient integrity for the approach, and will now show you the vertical guidance for that approach. So as with the glide slope, the vertical deviation will appear whether or not you have done anything to the autopilot. But if you want the autopilot or flight director to follow the guidance, you have to press the approach button on the autopilot control panel. And when you do that, you probably are already following a GPS course, so you see GPS is already captured, but it will arm the glide path mode. So in this case, this is depicting that we're descending on a VNAV path. We do have the alt select armed, and we've armed the glide path. Once it captures, glide path mode will become green, and alt select goes away. So again, no altitude select is armed. Altitude select is absolutely ignored. The autopilot will descend you through any selected altitude all the way to the ground. Okay, and lastly, 
we have this plus fee guidance. It's approach guidance provided by Wash GPS. The magenta diamond is it looks identical to LPV uh, glide path guidance. But it will appear when you're on an approach that doesn't have LPV minimums, but does have LNAV minimums and a published vertical descent angle. And you will see this LNAV plus V indication on the CDI at the same time the vertical deviation indicator appears. Same logic, you have to press the approach button to get the autopilot to follow the guidance. You'll see the same thing, glide path mode armed. When it captures, you'll see the same thing and you'll still see no altitude preselect. There's a little bit of a gotcha here because these approaches, this is an MDA. So it's an LNAV MDA. So you really have to make sure you don't descend below the MDA. We'll talk about that more in a minute. So some general approach guidelines for how to fly approaches in the G1000. First, never use activate approach. What activate approach does is it sends you direct to the initial approach fix. And that may or may not be what you want. Instead, you should just explicitly select the waypoint where you want to begin the approach. Anytime a fix inside the approach is active, the approach is active. That's all active means. That's a separate concept from what the autopilot is doing. So pressing the approach button on the autopilot, that's a different thing. That doesn't activate the approach. It doesn't change anything about the GPS. All it does is tell the autopilot to follow the vertical guidance. So two separate concepts. We will use that approach button, but we're not going to use procedure activate approach. We're also not going to use vectors or vectors to final. And the reason is when you activate vectors to final, you activate a course direct to the final approach fix. And that causes you to lose reference to every other fix or step down along the route. So if you've got two fixes between you and the final approach fix and they have step down altitudes, now you don't know where you are relative to those fixes. So it's much better practice to load the approach with the fix nearest you in order to get maximum information, then explicitly tell it which fix or which leg you want to use to start the approach. Uh, lastly, we want to bug the minimums in the Barrow Min's setting. We either bug the DA or we bug the MDA plus 50. So we're going to give ourselves a little bit of a buffer so that we level out well above the MDA and we hear the minimums call out well above the MDA to remind us we, we might need to do something to make the airplane level out. So more specifically, how do we fly the approach? When we're loading the approach, as I said, we're going to lo load it with the nearest fix. We're going to set either the DA or the MDA plus 50 in the Barrow Mins. We're going to explicitly select where to join the approach course and not load with vectors and not activate approach. So we're either going to highlight a fix that we're going to and hit direct to enter, or we're going to highlight a leg and activate the leg. And I'll show you how to do this uh, in a few minutes. Once we're cleared for the approach, we'll use the GPS to navigate all the way to the final approach fix. And that way we can use VNAV because remember, we can't use VNAV when we're using the green needles. We can only use it when we're using the GPS. We'll arm VNAV, so we'll press that VNAV button. We'll set the final approach fix altitude in the altitude select. Then just before the final approach fix, we're going to switch the CDI to the appropriate nav aid. It might be GPS, but it might be the localizer. If we are on an approach that has a glide slope or a glide path, including an advisory glide path, we're going to press the approach button on the autopilot so that the autopilot will join the approach guidance when it appears. Now we'll set the missed approach altitude in the altitude preselect once the glide slope is captured because once it's captured it will ignore what's in the altitude preselect and now we're set up for the missed approach. If there's no glide slope or glide path, instead of approach mode we'll use vertical speed mode. So we'll just press vertical speed and what that will do is capture our current vertical speed but it will also arm VNAV. And we don't want VNAV armed because it's going to level us out at the VNAV waypoint, which is at the final approach fix. And we don't want it to do that. So we're going to press the VNAV button again to disarm VNAV. And then we're going to set MDA plus 50 in the alt select window. 
And that way, if we're using the autopilot, it will level us out at MDA plus 50. If there's a step down in between, we can set that intermediate altitude so that we make sure we stay above it. Once we're sure we're going to stay above it, then we bug down to the next, uh, next step down. And I'll show you that in my example. And then we just monitor the descent rate. So we can adjust the vertical speed. It will capture our current vertical speed, but maybe we need to nose down a little bit because the approach steepens after the final approach fix. So we just need to monitor, and I'll show you a tool for doing that in the, in the demo coming up. Okay, and then when we hear the word minimums, which will be either at DA or MDA plus 50, because that's what we set in the Barrow Min's window, we will either initiate the missed approach. So if it's a DA, we hear it say minimums, we initiate the missed approach, and we're allowed to dip slightly below the DA as we execute a missed approach. Or if it's an MDA and we've decided we're going to drive, let's say we're four miles from the runway and we want to stay at MDA for a few miles to give ourselves a chance to see the runway, or if we're circling to a different runway, then we can press Alt to level us out. So even if we've been following glide path guidance, remember the autopilot isn't going to level us out when we have a glide path guidance displayed, but we can press Alt and it will capture our current altitude. So as soon as we hear minimums, we press Alt, autopilot or flight director will level us out. Or we can just disconnect the autopilot and hand fly. And I'll talk more specifically here about how to fly a missed approach. Sometimes you have this GA button. Generally, that's true with the GFC 700 autopilot. So when you have the GA button, I use this flow. I cram full power. And as I'm pushing the power, the throttle lever in, I push the GA button with my thumb. It's right above the throttle lever. I climb. So now the flight director is commanding a straight ahead climb. So I just nose up to pitch up into the flight director. The GA button also turns off the autopilot. So now I'm hand flying. I clean, which means I raise the flaps or if I'm in a retractable, I raise the gear as well. I cool. So in a Cessna 182, we'll want to open the cowl flaps. 172s don't have this, obviously. I want to set the course. Now the GA button just gave me straight ahead climb guidance on the flight director, but I want to make sure I'm going to the right place. So I'll confirm the missed approach altitude. I'll arm flight level change, and I'll arm either nav or heading mode, depending on which I want. If I'm flying the published miss that's in the flight plan, all I have to do is engage nav. And when I press the GA button, it also sequences the GPS past the missed approach. The GPS will suspend sequencing at the missed approach point until we tell it that we want to fly the missed approach. So pressing the GA button sequences it, but we just have to tell the flight director that we want to follow it. So we press the nav button. If we've been given alternate missed instructions like fly a heading, press heading. And then communicate. We'll tell ATC that we missed the approach and what we're doing. So cram, climb, clean, cool, course, communicate. When there's no GA button, so when we're using the CAP 140 autopilot, we can follow a similar procedure. It gets a little bit more complicated, but we still cram. There's no GA button to press, but we cram the power. We climb, we pitch up. We don't have a flight director in this case, uh, but we pitch up and maintain a straight ahead climb at least for a few seconds. We clean, we raise the flaps, cool cow flaps if appropriate. And then for course, we still have to tell the GPS to sequence, and the way we do it here is we either press the suspend soft key that appears on the PFD, or we press the procedure button and activate missed approach. I'll show you an example of this, actually all of this uh, coming up here. We confirm that we're looking at the GPS, so if we've been using a localizer, we can now switch to GPS using the CDI, and we again confirm the missed approach altitude. and then. Communicate, we tell ATC. And in this case, of course, you'd re-engage whatever modes you want on the CAP-140, vertical speed, and nav modes as well. So now I'm gonna show you two examples. The first approach that I'm gonna demonstrate is the RNAV runway 28 left at Hayward. So this is a GPS approach, so we'll be using the GPS to navigate to the final approach fix and beyond the final approach fix so that we can use VNAV. We'll assume that we're in a WAS G1000 here, so we'll set the DA, it's an LPV DA, rounded to the nearest 10, so 350 feet in the barrow mins when we load the approach. Or if we're circling, we'll set that MDA plus 50, the circling MDA plus 50 is 590 feet. 
Once we're cleared for the approach, we'll set the final approach fix altitude in the altitude select and we'll arm VNAV because in this phase, what we're going to do is allow the autopilot to descend us using VNAV all the way to the final approach fix. As we approach the final approach fix, we'll arm approach mode because that's when we'll start seeing approach guidance. So we'll press the approach button and we'll let the autopilot join the approach. And once the glide slope or glide path is captured between West, West and Sudge is where that will happen. We'll then set the missed approach altitude because remember once it's captured, it's ignoring what's in the altitude preselect. So then when we hear it say minimums, we can either initiate the missed approach or if we're circling, we can press the alt button to have the autopilot level us out. It won't level us out automatically. So here we are in our G1000 simulator. We've got a simple flight plan from Palo Alto to Hayward, and we're level at 7,000, direct to San Jose, which was part of our flight plan. We'll load the approach here. I'm going to select approach. Uh, we'll start with the RNAV 28 left at Hayward. And not going to load this with vectors. I'm going to pick the approach fix that's closest to me. And it looks like that's San Jose. I'm already on my way to San Jose, so I will go ahead and do that. For minimums, we're going to get LPV service, as we can see up there under the approach. So I'm going to load the DA, which is 350 feet, rounded up to the nearest 10, and hit enter to load the approach. Now, instead of hitting activate approach, I'm going to explicitly tell the GPS where I want to start the approach. I'm already direct to San Jose, but I need to be direct to the San Jose within the approach in order for it to sequence correctly onto the approach, which is what I expect to happen next. Now, suppose I receive an approach clearance to cross San Jose at 6,000 cleared for the approach. I need to go over here in the VNAV altitude and set that to 6,000 at San Jose. And notice when I do that, it will change from white to blue. Vertical track. Sets a top of descent less than one minute in front of me. So my vertical deviation indicator appears and my VNAV constraint altitude appears 6,000. I'm cleared for the approach, so I press VNAV to arm VNAV, approach to arm approach guidance. And I set the final approach fix altitude in the altitude preselect, which is 3,200 feet at such. So now GPS is still active, VPath is armed and GlidePath is armed, and you see my 6,000 constraint there that corresponds to the San Jose 6,000 foot altitude I was cleared for. As the vertical deviation indicator comes down, and you see my top of descent here is 16 seconds, 15 seconds away, the plane should join the VNAV path and descend, and you can also see there it says it'll descend at 2.5 degrees down, Right now it expects that to require 494 feet per minute. Now you can see it's captured the path and it's descending. And you can see that Alt-V is also still armed, which means it will respect the altitude preselect. It will level me out at the higher of the VNAV altitude 6000 or the altitude preselect altitude 3200. In this case, that's what I want. I want it to descend all the way down to the final approach fix altitude, stopping at each VNAV altitude along the way. Now, as I approach San Jose, I expect the autopilot to level me out. I can see that it has a bottom of descent on the moving map and in the VNAV profile window. It's 12, 11 seconds in front of me now. And Alt has captured now instead of VPath, and you can see VPath is still armed. So that means if it reaches another VNAV profile, it will start to descend. The, the vertical deviation indicator is gone, and that's because the top of descent is a, more than a minute away from me. And you can see it there on the moving map. Notice that it's more than five minutes away as well, which means I may have to press the VNAV button again to rearm it. I'll show you what that looks like. Now, as we approach the next waypoint, Jobus, you can see here the top of descent is a little over a minute away. At one minute, the vertical deviation indicator will reappear and it will say vertical track. Vertical track. So there we go. And you can see that VPath is flashing in this inverse video white. So that's because the top of descent was more than five minutes away. So I just need to press VNAV again and see it stopped flashing. So now again, I'm set up for it to descend on the VNAV path. I see the new altitude, 5,700. 
Okay, then suppose ATC has to vector me. Maybe there's traffic or maybe they just don't want me flying that course reversal. So they tell me to fly a heading. So I switch over to heading mode, turn into a heading. Notice that that disarmed my glide path. So we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. And then we clear whatever conflict and they just say clear direct Oka V, cross Oka V at 4,800, cleared approach. So we'll activate direct Oka V. We'll go over here and activate the GPS again to go direct Oka V. And then we're still cleared for the approach or we're again cleared for the approach. So we'll make sure that we've got V path and see the glide slope is gone. So now we'll add the glide path. Now activating Oka V at 4,800 set another top of descent very close to me. So once I got the autopilot set up correctly, it started descending me towards 4,800 at Okavi. Okay, we're about to reach Okavi. Looks like we'll be right at 4,800 as we cross Okavi. Notice the bottom of descent is still about two minutes in front of me, though, and it's depicted on the moving map at Wish. So there the GPS has sequenced, and the VNAV constraint moved down to 3,900 at Wish. It's just going to keep me descending on one nice descent path all the way down to Wish. Okay, now we're on our way to Wish. Notice the bottom of descent is within one minute. It's telling me it's going to level me out at Wish at 3,900. Sudge is the final approach fix. So once we're crossing Wish and Sudge is the active waypoint, we will start to see glide path guidance. VNAV guidance will disappear. The vertical deviation indicator will change from VNAV to glide path. And there you can see altitude captured, the vertical deviation disappeared, and the glide path appeared. Glide path is still armed, and we're below the glide path, which is what we expect. So the autopilot has leveled us off at 3,900, which was the VNAV constraint, and it will fly us into the glide path. And since glide path is armed, it captures, and the plane starts descending on the glide path. Now that the glide path is captured, I can set my missed approach altitude, which is 2100. And notice there is no Alt Select or Alt V armed here. The autopilot will ignore that altitude preselect on the way down. It will not level me out at 2100. Okay, here we are, a little farther down the approach, descending. Now the altitude preselect, it flashes to alert you when you're within 200 feet and see it flashing there. But again, we don't see Alt Select armed in the mode enunciation panel. It's not going to level us out at 2100, so let's just watch that. And it just keeps going. So glide path and glide slope modes, because they don't have Alt Select armed, absolutely will ignore the altitude preselect. And that's why we set it to the missed approach altitude that's the next altitude we'll need for altitude preselect if we have to go missed. Okay, so here we are a little farther down on the final segment of the approach, a few hundred feet above the DA. We're still descending nicely on the glide path. The autopilot's kept us centered. But we're going to get down to the DA and not see the runway. So we need to execute the missed approach at the DA. We are allowed to go a little bit below the DA as we transition into a missed approach because it's a decision altitude. So when we hear the word minimums, we can begin to transition into the missed approach. But we're going to do that. We don't have a GA button here. So we, in real life, would disconnect the autopilot minimums. and minimums. pitch up, raise the flaps. Then we'd engage the right flight director modes. We'd engage flight level change and it would capture our current airspeed and we can adjust that with the up and down buttons. We're already in nav mode, but we need to sequence the GPS and see we haven't yet reached the missed approach point, so it isn't giving us the option. Once we cross the missed approach point, the OBS soft key here will change to suspend and it will not sequence until we hit that suspend button again. Or if we want to sequence before we see that button, we can go to procedure and activate missed approach and see how that sequence us on past that 600 foot waypoint. GPS is still active. Flight level change is still active. We always want to check those anytime we change the GPS. 
So it sequenced us on, because it knew we were past 600 feet, and it sequenced us on direct to Oakland, and plane is turning direct to Oakland. And since we had bugged the altitude preselect to the missed approach altitude, now it's leveling us out. And that all happens really quickly. If you're not on top of bugging that altitude, if you still have it bugged to something lower or to the final approach fix altitude, you might accidentally climb above the missed approach altitude. So that's why we set it at the final approach fix before we get busy executing the missed approach at DA. The second approach that I'll be demonstrating is the localizer DME runway 28 left. So of course this is a localizer approach. We have to use the green needle inside the final approach fix, but we can use the GPS to navigate to the final approach fix, which is Fernie, and that'll allow us to use VNAV to descend through the step downs at Brian and GBEN. Because it's an MDA, we're going to set MDA plus 50 in the barrow minimums. So 550 feet MSL, or if we're circling, it's the circling MDA plus 50, that's 590 feet MSL. Once we're cleared for the approach, we'll set the final approach fix altitude in the alt select, and we'll arm VNAV. Because again, in this phase of flight, we're wanting the autopilot or flight director to guide us using VNAV to the final approach fix. Then as we approach Fernie, we'll arm vertical speed mode, we'll disarm VNAV. And so what that will do is capture our current vertical speed and disarming VNAV will stop us from leveling out at the altitude at the final approach fix. We don't actually want that. We want to continue a nice stable descent through the final approach fix all the way to the runway. And we'll set the CDI to localizer because we have to be using the localizer on this leg of the approach. We'll also set the altitude at Rishi. Because we have this step down between us and the MDA, we'll set the alt select to Rishi so that we don't go below it. But then once we're sure we're going to meet that step down at Rishi, we'll set the MDA plus 50. That's our next step down. And we'll allow the autopilot to level us off at MDA plus 50. We'll then just monitor our descent rate. I'll show you some tools for how to do that to make sure that we cross that step down at Rishi at, at the right altitude. Then as we get to the MDA, we'll hear the word minimums, or MDA plus 50 actually. And when we hear that, we'll allow ALT to capture. Remember the autopilot and flight director will capture this altitude because ALT select will be armed and set to the MDA plus 50. Then we'll set the missed approach altitude. Then we'll initiate the missed approach. And the, the flow will be the same, cramp, climb, clean, cool, course, communicate. Okay, so here we are flying outside of San Jose, level at 5,000 feet with a simple flight plan from Palo Alto to Hayward. We're going to fly the Hayward localizer runway 28 left approach. I never load with vectors, so I'm going to select the closest fix to me that gives me the most information, which is San Jose. And in minimums, since this is an MDA, I'm going to put the MDA plus 50 feet in the barrow minimums. That would be 550 feet. So we'll enter that. Go ahead and load the approach. And now I've got the approach loaded. I have to figure out how to start the approach. The controllers told me to fly heading 050 vectors for the localizer. So I can scroll through here and kind of figure out where I am, highlight each fix, zoom in and out so I get a sense of where I am relative to each fix. And I can see that I'm outside of Brian. So I'm going to get vectored somewhere in around GBEN, Brian, or outside of Brian. So it might be tempting to go over here and select Activate Vectors to Final. That's what the controller told me, right? And let me show you why I don't do that. What it does is activates the final approach fix, but see how it deletes all the information about Brian and GBEN? I no longer have any information about where I am relative to those fixes. So as the controller turns me inbound here, he says Fly Heading 020, this is essentially a base turn, I can see I'm still going to join somewhere around GBIN or Brian, and I'm responsible for those step downs. I have to stay above the published altitudes, even if he vectors me on course. So instead, I'm going to go over here and activate the leg that I think I will intercept. I highlight the second waypoint in the leg, hit the soft key for activate leg, and now I've activated the leg between Brian and GBIN. And see, now I got my altitude information and distance reference to GBEN back. I also want to use the GPS to navigate to the final approach fix. So I'm going to go change the CDI back to GPS. It changed automatically to localizer when I activated vectors. The next thing that's going to happen, we're here on base. We know the controller's going to turn us inbound. 
and they usually do that within 30 degrees of the approach course. So the approach course here is 288. So we'll probably get a heading of 310, 320, something like that. And we'll get an approach clearance. And it almost always is in the form of a PTAC. P-T-A-C is a little mnemonic we use to remember it. P is for position, T is for turn, A is for altitude, C is for clearance. So it will sound like Skyhawk 123, you're six miles from G-Ben, turn left heading 320, maintain 3,700 until established on the localizer, cleared for the localizer 28 left approach at Hayward. So let's suppose that's what happens. We're cleared to turn left heading 320, maintain 3,700 till established and cleared for the approach. So we set the heading over here to 320. Now we need to select a lower altitude. Vertical so we'll set track. the final approach fix altitude in our altitude preselect. And then we'll arm VNAV so the autopilot will start descending us on the VNAV path, which is right there in front of us. We also wanted to join the GPS course. So we hit the nav mode and we'll use the GPS to navigate to the final approach fix. And you see with GPS armed, it will join that course. And we're right on track to join the leg that we predicted between Brian and Jeevan. The VNAV path was right in front of us. The top of descent was a little bit ahead of us. It's now about 15 seconds away. So as the top of descent comes down, the path is armed and the autopilot will join the path and start descending us. There it's captured. And we can see that Alt-V is still armed, which means the autopilot will level us out at the higher of this 2200 pre-select or the 3700 step-down altitude. So as the course comes in, GPS is armed, so the autopilot should start a left turn here to join the course and get us nicely established on the course. And it looks like we're still on the path, continuing to send to 3700 at GBAN. I'm just outside of GBAN. We're going to watch the autopilot should keep me above 3,700 at GBAN. So I'll see the altitude capture here momentarily. Okay, so alt mode is captured. So it's going to keep me above that 3,700 step down. But look at what's happened here to the localizer. It's switched to the localizer because it knows that I'm on a localizer based approach and I have to be using the localizer on the final segment to the approach. So that's what I want. It happened a little earlier than I would like. The autopilot seamlessly captured localizer, but it also kept me level at 3700 and I need to keep descending. So I'll hit vertical speed and nose down. Now, if I had done that just outside of G-Ben, it would have captured my current descent rate. Now I have a descent planning problem. I need to figure out what descent rate is going to get me to the final approach fix at 2500. So I'm gonna use some of the tools here. I'll set the altitude, it looks like I set it incorrectly to 2200 so it should be 2500 at Fernie and this little blue banana shaped thing is telling me where I will reach 2500 feet and you can see it's right at Fernie if I nose up it should move a little farther if I nose down it should move a little closer and now I can use vertical speed mode to tweak my descent rate so that I cross Fernie at 2500 right now the autopilot is set up to level me off at 2500 it's flashing to tell me I'm within 200 feet of my altitude preselect, and alt select is armed. I could go ahead and lower the altitude bug now and let it continue a nice stable descent. And that's really what I should do. I'm not going to do that just to show you what happens if you forget to do that. So here it's leveled me off at 2,500 feet. I know that's not what I want. I'm just crossing Fernie, so I need to continue descending. So I'll select a lower altitude and select a vertical speed descent. Now I know the approach steepens inside of Fernie, so I need to select a little bit steeper descent rate. But how do I know what descent rate? So normally I would bug down to the MDA plus 50, but I have this step down at Rishi and I need to stay above 1560 feet there. So instead, I'm going to use the same tool. I'm going to set the altitude preselect to 1600 and see where I will cross Rishi. It looks like I'll be a little high so I can steepen my descent. Now I also know it's a 3.44 degree descent, and at 90 knots, that should be about 600 feet per minute. So this descent rate should work out, but I can also tweak it nose up and nose down here as I estimate where I'm going to cross Rishi. Once I'm sure I'm going to cross Rishi at the right altitude, then I'll lower my altitude preselect bug 
to the MDA plus 50 so that it continues descending and does not level me out at Rishi because that is how I will end up high again. It looks like I'm going to cross Rishi just a little bit high. I should be safe. So I've gone ahead and lowered my bug. And here I'm 0 0.2, 0 0.1 from Rishi. It looks like I'm about 200 feet high. So as I cross Rishi, I'm definitely high. I'm going to go ahead and steepen my descent a little bit because I know that I need to get down to the MDA if I want to have any chance of landing. Okay, so as I approach the missed approach point and the MDA, you can see that Alt Select is armed, and I've got the Alt Pre-Select set to 550 feet, MDA plus 50. So the, alt, the autopilot is going to level me off here at the MDA plus 50. And then I have two choices. I can drive to the runway, or if I'm circling, I can level off at that altitude and circle or I can start the missed approach. In order to start the missed approach, Minimums. I just need to set Minimums. the pre-select altitude up to the missed approach altitude. And then select a, a vertical mode. So I'll select flight level change. I'll press nose up to reduce the airspeed and raise the nose. And now I'm climbing on the missed approach. And I'm still using the localizer for course guidance. But once I pass the missed approach point, the GPS in the background is still sequencing along and it will suspend and show me the suspend button. So when I press the suspend soft key, it sequences the GPS onto the missed approach point and I can switch back over and start using the GPS for course guidance. Now notice that disrupted my lateral mode. So I need to go back over here and rearm nav mode. So this is why we always check the mode enunciations anytime we mess with the CDI or the flight plan. And now we've begun the missed approach. Alt select is armed, so the autopilot will level us out at 2100. And there we go. Cool, so that wraps it up. I hope that helps you understand how to use the GFC 700 autopilot, vertical guidance, and all the tools of the G1000 to fly instrument approaches. Thanks for watching.